The pantograph automatically detects a contact line installed along a highway and connects to it. When it's hooked up, it powers the truck and charges its battery as it moves. There's a revolution going on in the auto industry. Cars are rapidly going electric as battery technology advances. The same can't be said for trucks. There is no battery efficient enough to power one of these effectively. So heavy goods vehicles now account for more than a quarter of all transport CO2 emissions in Europe, 6% of the continent's total. And that share is increasing. And yet we rely on them because more than 70% of all goods traded in Europe are transported by road. So I've come to this test track in northern Germany to look at a system to power and charge hybrid electric trucks as they move in an effort to slash greenhouse gas emissions. This is Groß Dolln, a remote nature reserve also housing one of Germany's largest solar farms during the Cold War, the continent's largest military airfield. Not the most obvious place for German industrial powerhouse Siemens to set up shop. So this shelter, which was once used to house Soviet-era nuclear bombers, is now the field test office for something called the E-Highway. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Guy Henderson. Hasso Gunjes. How nice you? meeting you and welcome to our test facility. Thank you very much. Okay. So this is part of the E-Highway system. It's actually the key component, okay. um, because this device, which we call the pantograph, mm -hmm. the uh, connecting device, that allows this truck to contact the contact wire while driving and providing the truck with electric energy. And that's um, basically the key innovation which we have in this system. The pantograph automatically detects a contact line installed along a highway and connects to it. The catenary system, as it's called, is powered by substations put in along the route. When it's hooked up, it powers the truck and charges its battery as it moves. If the truck breaks, the energy generated can even feed back into the grid. When you think of hybrid, you automatically think battery combustion, but that's not actually the case. It doesn't have to. Hybrid okay. is open to, to whatever type of hybrid you okay. want. So and even as the technology advances, say in fuel cell technology, yes. this would still be a relevant yes. technology. You, okay. Because of your, yeah, the, the idea is basically that you, you can combine it with all these technologies. And that's important because the um, if you look at the infrastructure, many people think, okay, this is um, rail electrification infrastructure. We had this for more than 100 years. Um, can't we come up with something better at the mm -hmm. moment? Mm -hmm. I think no, because this is something which provides, based on mature technology, the option to decarbonize uh, the transport mm -hmm. um, sector, mm -hmm. the road freight transport sector mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. by not excluding the other technologies in the future. And I think that's really important with this technology. Okay. I think it's time for a test drive. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> okay, Robert. So let me introduce you to our okay, driver. Robert. Veteran long haul driver Robert Albrecht takes over from here and prepares to put the pantograph through its paces. It's on, even though it's silent. Yes, it's really silent. Yeah. It's weird. Okay, we got it. We got it. Hold on. Yeah. So is it now? Okay. okay. I can. I have the uh, gear fencing. I have the lane. It's uh, you have, must have it. And then you can drop this button. Okay. So we see it going up there. Okay. There it is. Dump. Connected. Perfect. Okay. And now we drive electric. Okay. And you can and see it. Charge the batteries. And can you see it charging? It shows yes, you. Yes. This okay. is a charge. Uh, uh, das Ladebild. Ten percent. It's already gone up one percent. 
Yeah, so it's, it's okay. So, holding on. Now Robert's going to step it up a level. Powerful lead. Yeah, it is powerful, yeah. Follow me. Yes, yeah, so if, if you can. <laughs> okay, so we're going 52 <laughs> kilometers an hour. And we're now going to put on the gas. So when we, so as we turn out, Pantograph comes automatically down. That's just built into the system. Very quickly passing Greg or the other driver, and then we swerve back in when we're safe to do so. And so it's at this point you can only put the system back up manually, but you just push a button. That's simple. Simple as that. Thank you. <laughs> so we've seen this being tested. How soon until we see these on the roads in Germany and other parts of Europe? How practical, how near are we to this being a reality? Well, the, the real good point about this is that this is based on very mature technology, railway electrification that has been around for more than 100 years. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of experience with this technology yep. and that helps us, of course, also to roll this out on a bigger scale. What does the future look like for these? Is this going to be connecting Europe to Asia or are we talking about just small veins off the major arteries? Where's this, where's this going in your wildest dreams? <laughs> My wildest <laughs> dreams? Um, I see the rollout of the system very similar to the rollout of rail electrification. You could look into shuttle applications for trucks mm -hmm. on the main roads in Germany, but of course also then going beyond. And um, the interesting aspect is that the system has to be looked into in very much detail in different studies. One study was, for example, performed by the BDI, which is the German Association of Industries. Mm -hmm. And they looked into that searching for the solution, which is most economical and ecological mm -hmm. to be applied in a reasonable time in order to achieve the targets we have with the climate. Mm -hmm. They found out that this system is actually the most economic investment you can have in terms of decarbonizing road freight transport. And they did this on the basis of Germany only. But they also said that as soon as this expands beyond the borders of Germany, then this will become even more economical. So we've now seen the Pantograph system being tested in the field. We're now going to head back to a lab in Berlin and look at the technology behind it. Michael Peter, good morning. How hey, Guy. Nice very to good you. to meet you. Thank you very much for your time. Head of Siemens Thanks. Mobility, Michael Peter, spends his days looking into the future. And he sees e-highways one day serving as automated arteries between smart cities. If you had to just recharge one hour every 10 hours, you would have to take 10% of the trucks and put them on a parking lot just to charge them. I mean, this would be a huge logistical effort. So, so to use the catenary line and possibly if hybrid uh, solutions where you, you can at the same time charge the battery. So when, when, when the, the catenary line finishes, you can drive into the city center clean and you could also have a, um, a still a combustion engine on, on board because the electrical drives are very small, would be indeed a huge step forward. So you would see this as the future or a future? For road I think everything is a future nowadays. Yeah. I think everybody okay. has to contribute. Yeah. Cars have to contribute to be cleaner. Uh, trucks have to do so, yeah. and, and the trains also. So, Bastian, this is the Pantograph. This is it. This is the key to the e-highway. Exactly. Okay. And we have one of the project lead here, Bastian Blasser, and his team have spent years adapting a technology originally designed for trains. For example, by adding a second contact point to ground the electricity, because of course a truck has rubber wheels, and installing extra sensors. And of course, those lines can also move, because think of wind uh, pushing on these wires, and think of a bridge that might be passed under without uh, interrupting the system. So I see it moving around there, exactly. and that is simulating basically road surface movement. This is a key, this is a key feature. Okay, in very basic terms mm -hmm. here, but you hit a pothole, it's going to move faster than that. It's going to go. It's going to be a jolt, isn't it? So does it? Does the pantograph realistically? It's going to lose contact for a moment when that happens. That depends on other um, 
um, infrastructure within the truck. And does that matter, you know, if it does lose contact? Not the, really. Yeah. It does not really matter because there's, of course, other electromechanical stuff that even if there's a short interruption, wouldn't really um, disrupt the um, power connection to okay. the truck. Well, I, I guess what I'm wondering is, there, is there a way we can kind of hone in on that sensor technology? Because it seems to me like it's so central to how this system works. Uh, it's, it's central, but not only the, uh, s uh, the sensors, also, of course, the uh, algorithms that are running in the system itself okay. are very crucial. Okay. Uh, so sensors by themselves are stupid, so to say, if they don't know what to do with the data. Alarm bells are ringing over road freight transport's contribution to climate change. The e-highway may not be the answer. It may well be one of them. That's another story done and dusted from Razor, but if you like, comment and subscribe by hitting the bell button below, you'll get to watch loads more science and tech stories from Razor.